January 17th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Matthew chapter 17 from the New Testament. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them privately up a high mountain. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. Then Moses and Elijah also appeared before them, talking with him. So Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you want, I will make three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my one dear son, in whom I take great delight. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they were overwhelmed with fear and threw themselves down with their faces to the ground. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Do not be afraid. When they looked up, all they saw was Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Do not tell anyone about the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. The disciples asked him, Why then do the experts in the law say that Elijah must come first? He answered, Elijah does indeed come first and will restore all things. And I tell you that Elijah has already come. Yet they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they wanted. In the same way, the Son of Man will suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them about John the Baptist. When they came to the crowd, a man came to him, knelt before him, and said, Lord, have mercy on my son, because he has seizures and suffers terribly, for he often falls into the fire and into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they were not able to heal him. Jesus answered, You unbelieving and perverse generation! How much longer must I be with you? How much longer must I endure you? Bring him here to me. Then Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the boy was healed from that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why couldn't we cast it out? He told them, It was because of your little faith, I tell you the truth. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to the mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. When they gathered together in Galilee, Jesus told them, The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him, and on the third day he will be raised. And they became greatly distressed. After they arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the temple tax came to Peter and said, Your teacher pays the double drachma tax, doesn't he? He said, Yes. When Peter came into the house, Jesus spoke to him first. What do you think, Simon, from whom do earthly kings collect tolls or taxes, from their sons or from foreigners? After he said from foreigners, Jesus said to him, Then the sons are free. But so that we don't offend them, go to the lake and throw out a hook. Take the first fish that comes up, and when you open its mouth, you will find a four drachma coin. Take that and give it to them for me and you. God, I love when you talk about faith like a mustard seed, that we just need something that small to believe and we can move mountains. And I was doing some studying about the botanicals in the Bible, the different plants in the Bible, um, because we use mustard seeds in cooking, but it's usually like ground up. But most of us aren't farmers anymore. So some of these concepts that made sense to the people you, that your son was talking to um, may not be really clear to us right now. And even though the mustard seed isn't obviously the smallest seed ever, uh, it was the smallest common planting seed at that time. Uh, about, what did the book say? About an eighth of an inch. So, so pretty small. But then I get really excited about what that seed can do. The, the book I was reading said that um, there are a few plants which grow so large in one season as a mustard seed, and a few plants would be characterized by such rapid germination of the seed. Mustard planted one day could begin growing the next.
And I love that because that's you. <laughs> you come and germinate us and fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit. And we can the next day go out and share with other people about your love and your forgiveness and your kindness and your grace and your mercy. And how amazing an eternal life with you is. So hopefully every time that we talk about the mustard seed, we don't just kind of bypass it because it's not something that, that we're used to, but we think for a moment and realize that one of the smallest seeds could also grow into one of the largest plants that we could be one of the, the loudest disciples <laughs> for you, God, one of the most effective disciples for you, God, and that it doesn't take years and years and years for us to grow into what you need us to, that as soon as you come into our heart and live there, that we can go out and tell others about you. Thank you for sharing such amazing stories that are easy to understand and definitely apply to our lives even today. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.